The year was 1982, the place Australia. Two scientists were busy on their quest to isolate a bacteria they suspected caused symptoms of gastritis, but not many believed in them. How could a bacteria live in the acid of the stomach? Surely it was only stress or spicy foods or maybe smoking that caused ulcers and gastritis? When the Australian scientists finally found a stubborn bacteria that lived comfortably in the acid, their discovery was not easily accepted. In an effort to persuade the medical community, one of those scientists bravely drank a whole cup filled with the bacteria in question. This was of course while everyone was watching. In a couple of days, he had developed all the symptoms of gastritis. It was not only the symptoms, however, that he got from this. After some years, along with his colleague, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Medicine. He should also have been knighted for his bravery, but that didn't happen. As I'm sure most of you have figured out by now, the infamous bacteria that we are talking about is Helicobacter pylori, H. pylori in short. A little chemistry here. As you all know, a strong acid can even eat through metal, one of the strongest substances in the world. How strong is an acid depends on where it is on the pH scale. The pH runs from uh, 0 to 14. Water is in the middle with a pH of 7. Anything below 7 is getting more and more acidic. For example, vinegar has a pH of 3 and lemon has a pH of 2. The battery acid has a pH of 0. Anything above 7 is called an alkaline solution. The common examples being the household detergents we use while uh, for cleaning purposes. Well, how is it that our bodies, how strong is our stomach acid? The acid in our stomach can reach as low as 1.5. I can just imagine how strong this acid is turning and digesting all the stuff we eat all the time. Stomach acid is not only useful for digestion. It also efficiently kills most pathogens passing through the stomach. This is why someone who doesn't have enough acid in their stomach will be exposed to a lot of infections. But how come the acid doesn't digest the stomach itself? Well, our stomach is lined with a very protective mucus that makes sure the acid doesn't come in contact with a delicate lining inside. More than half of the world's population has H. pylori, but most don't have any symptoms. Only about 10% uh, will present with symptoms of some kind. Those with symptoms will usually have uh, pain in the middle of the chest that radiates to the back, pain when hungry or during night times, abdominal distension, and even belching. The pain is made worse with smoking, alcohol, or spicy or acidic foods, and during periods of stress and fasting. On the other hand, eating food and taking antacids may make the pain a lot better. How does one get this horrible sounding bacteria? The most implicated mode of transmission is fecal aura. Wash your hands. What we shouldn't forget to mention is how the bacteria lives in the acid unbothered. H. pylori makes use of an enzyme called urease to create its own little acid-free house in an area of burning acid. That's very, very smart. But with time, the protective mucus gets thinner and thinner, and the stomach lining gets more and more inflamed. With the protective mucus gone, the acid gets in touch with the lining of the stomach and a sore area that is an ulcer forms. The ulcer formed as the result of an H. pylori infection has four dangerous consequences. If the ulcer is near a blood vessel, the blood vessel may rupture. Bleeding, and as a result, anemia may ensue. The bleeding may come out as dark, tarry stool, or one, one may even throw up coffee ground vomitus. The ulcer can also perforate a wall of the stomach. This is a surgical emergency. The person may very well die if he or she is not operated on very quickly. The signs of perforations are sudden severe pain and high temperature on a background history of a stomach ulcer. A third dangerous consequence of an ulcer is when the ulcer is scarred and obstructs the way into the small intestine. A person with an obstruction may get full very quickly, may vomit easily, and may lose a lot of weight. The fourth and last complication of a stomach ulcer post H. pylori infection is that it leads to stomach cancer. Around 1% of those symptomatic patients may develop cancer in their lifetime. Chronic inflammation coupled with all the irritants that the bacteria makes can transform the cells of the stomach and induce unregulated replication and that's cancer.
It's not very hard to diagnose H. pylori. One can get a blood test, that is an antibiotic test, a stool antigen test, or a urea breast test. One thing that you absolutely need to do, however, is to make sure that you stop acid lowering drugs for at least two weeks before you take the test so that you won't get a false negative result. The treatment of H. pylori has two objectives in mind, to get rid of the bacteria and to give time for the ulcer to heal by lowering the acid. In this way, an ulcer can heal in some months. This is called a combination therapy, where one is given antibiotics to kill the bacteria and proton pump inhibitors to lower the acid. Just make sure to talk with your doctor about taking supplements because uh, common side effects of those medicines like omeprazole is osteoporosis and deficiencies of minerals like uh, magnesium and calcium. Finally, does H. pylori come back after treatment? If it does, maybe the antibiotics were not taken properly, or maybe the bacteria were resistant to the combination of antibiotics given. If you are H. pylori negative, but still have symptoms of gastritis, it's worth considering if the cause wasn't chronic use of uh, taking pain medications like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And food. What will you eat after H. pylori diagnosis? Whatever doesn't give you symptoms. One popular food is cabbage. Cabbage has been used for a long time to heal ulcers. In the era of blenders, cabbage juice has become very, very popular. If this helps you, then by all means continue it. To, to people who can't stomach drinking a cup of cabbage juice every day, it most certainly doesn't need to be juiced. Eat it raw in a salad or lightly steamed. Also, don't forget to eat your green veggies, but as always, everything in moderation. Just stay clear away from smoking and alcohol, try to avoid the things that stress you, swap ibuprofen or other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for stomach-friendly pain medications like paracetamol, and eat whatever settles in your tummy. Till next time, may you live happy and answer free.